Yo, what's up? John Sonmas here from simpleprogrammer.com. And today, what are we going to talk about? How about succeeding as a junior developer? That's what we're going to be talking about. So I know a lot of you guys are in the junior developer role and you want to figure out how you can how you can succeed, how you can get up there, climb the little corporate ladder like a good boy and get your uh, big paycheck, get that senior title next to your name. That's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, I did this. I help a lot of people do this. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. But a lot of people don't really tell you what to do when you get your first job, you know, unfortunately. But uh, I'm going to tell you. In fact, hold on right there. Because I got a book for you, The Complete Software Developer Career Guide. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Go buy it on, on Amazon. There's an audio version as well. You're going to like it. All right, It's going to give you a lot of advice to how to start your career, honestly. Uh, good stuff there. So click the subscribe button if you haven't already. On this channel, I teach you how to develop the soft skills that uh, no one really teaches you in life as a programmer. So, uh, you know, some, some people say that I am the nerd whisperer, that I unnerd you. You know, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go with that. That's all right. Okay. That's good. All right, let's jump into this. All right, so I got this question from Griffin. I haven't found any videos about what to do once you get your first gig. Everything I've read slash listened to is about how to get it. If you could go back to your first serious developer job, is there anything you'd have done differently? I guess I'm looking for some advice in making the most of this amazing opportunity. Shit, I feel really bad that it like took me three years to answer him. But so what advice would you give to a new developer to stand out, adapt and grow as quickly in the workplace as possible? The company is quite small and a tight night community. I think he means knit, but I like the idea of a tight night community. I think that's really the best place to work is when you've got tight nights. All right. He says additional info. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you for everything you're doing. Your videos, resources, and complete handbook have helped me immensely. Uh, to keep this short, I started my first job out of college as a junior software developer this week. Everyone at work was extremely competent and helpful, which I'm grateful for. This is my first time in life where I actually feel imposter syndrome. I'm welcoming this feeling. As I know, I'm in the right place because I will be forced to sink or swim. Good. You've listened to my videos, my friend. Good. And read my book. Excellent. All right. I know the road ahead will be long and challenging. However, I'm excited for all the growth ahead. This dude is really excited. I like that. All right. So let's talk about this. So what do you do as a junior developer? What do you do at your first job? What would I have done differently? So here's the thing. Okay. And I think I pretty much did this right is you need to ask a lot of questions, a lot of questions. All right. Don't be afraid to ask questions. So many of you guys, you fail because you're not asking questions and you need to, you need to, you, you need to sit down with another developer who's been there for a while and they're going over stuff and you don't understand it. Ask a question. Now there's a good way to ask a question. There's a bad way to ask a question, right? A bad way to ask a question is to just You'd like to, to give nothing about what you understand about it and just say, why or what's that, right? Well, a good way to ask a question is to say, oh, okay, so I see you're doing this here and are you doing this because of this? If, if not, why, right? To ask a more specific question so you can get a good answer, okay? There's no stupid questions. There's only stupid people. You've heard that. Don't be a stupid person. Don't be a stupid question asker. Ask a smart question, all right? Uh, it, it might seem dumb to you to ask a question, but... It, it, in the long run, it's going to benefit you, right? In the short run, they might be like, wow, we hired this guy that doesn't know anything. That's interesting. But in the long run, what's going to happen is that you're going to, you're going to get up to speed that much faster. See, the people that don't ask questions, they're lost for a very long time. And then they get to a point where they have to pretend like they know things because they've been around for such a long time that it'd be embarrassing if they didn't know the answer to these questions. They never get the chance to answer a question, right? I'll give you an example. Here, here you go. You guys will relate to this, okay? Have you ever asked someone their name, like been introduced to someone, and then you forget their name? And then you you can't ask them, like you, you see them like three or four times and you're like, shit, is it Justin or Jake? I, I don't know. And then like, you can't call them by anything and you can't ask them at that point. You can't be like, oh, hey, yeah, guy that I, I've been talking to that I've met for like four times. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> I forgot it. Uh, you can't do that anymore, right? I mean, you should do that at that point, but the same thing happens. And so you, you don't want to actually be an imposter. You want to ask those questions. So that's number one. Another thing I would say is that, you know, as a junior developer, like starting with a new company, get very familiar with the code base. 
like go to bed, you know, and, and, and sleep with the code base, you know, because the more familiar you are with the code base, the better you're going to be, the better you're going to understand what's happening. Now it might be a huge framework, a huge system, a complex system, in which case understand the high level architecture, again, ask questions and then pick some area of code that you're going to study and that you're going to know really well. All right. Then try tweaking it, making changes, right? Before you're assigned stuff that you don't know how to do, be like, Hey, if I needed to, to make this button suddenly do something different or take input this way or add an input field, th that's always a good thing. Like if you really want to get familiar with the code base, usually most code bases, right? Most applications we have, they have uh, two paths, main paths for the system, right? One is you enter some data, okay? And then you save it or you store it somehow. And so, so try creating a new field or new data that you can enter. The second one is that data comes up and is displayed from the database or wherever on the screen. So try to create some some data some that you're going to pull from somewhere and, and display on the screen. So if you can do both of those things, right, and you understand how to do that on your own, you're, you're probably going to have a pretty good understanding of most of the changes that you're going to make in the code base because most, most things rely around that. And you're going to understand all the pieces that it touches in order to do that stuff. So that's that's really important. And then, you know, you always got to be learning, right? As a, as a junior developer, I think a lot of developers think, okay, well, I made it, finally got my programming job. No, you know, I got my book here, The Complete Software Developer Career Guy. Like I said, read through this book, go through this, you know, this is going to help you at, at multiple points in your career. And then still pick up other books, constantly be reading. You should be reading at least, at least one tech related book per month, maybe one per week or, or one every two weeks, to be honest with you, to really get... Uh, up on your craft. You should be reading blogs every day of programmers or watching YouTube channels of, of programmers to, to stay up on things, you know, maybe a little bit of hacker news, although that can rot your mind if you, if you're too much in the hacker news stuff, but you know what I'm saying? You should keep up to date on that stuff. You should create your own programming blog. I've got a course on how to create a blog to boost your career. We'll put a link up here. It's totally free email course. Okay. There's a link down description as well. And you can just go to simpleprogrammer.com and you can, you can click on that if you want to join there. But th those are some of the things that you should be doing. Okay. And you know, the, the final thing I'll, I'll give you is that, and this one is probably going to come as a surprise is you should be mentoring other people. Okay. <laughs> I, I know that seems really weird, but as you learn things, teach them to other people. Okay. Why? Because that will help you to take knowledge to uh, become understanding, which is really important. When you teach someone something, you, you gain a, a deeper understanding of it. Not only that, but when you do that process, uh, you're going to become more valuable in the company, right? The most valuable person in any company is the person who makes other people valuable. Remember that that's your, that's your job above anything else is to do that. If you do that, you will become irreplaceable and you'll become the most valuable person in the company. So do it.